Before we begin this very detailed tutorial, we need to understand one thing, and that is in the input merge command we are only ever merging information or survey data into the currently opened survey. There is no way of merging information into a survey that isn't currently on screen. If we select input merge and choose legend what we're going to do here is collect some feature codes that exist in another existing LSS survey and merge those into the current survey. I'm going to select another survey. Within this command we can either add only or replace as well as add. And this is a option which is available in most of the merge commands. Add only will only add those feature codes in the other selected survey which don't currently exist within the current survey irrespective of how they're defined. For example if you had TB in the current survey and TB in the other chosen survey even if they were called something completely different had different line styles and colors if we just chose add only then they wouldn't get merged in. However if we chose replace then even though feature codes had the same name it would merge them in to the current survey. Let's have a look at add only. It's telling me that there are no suitable point feature entries in the other survey that don't already exist in the current survey. But there are some link features. We can simply merge them all in by just using the word all. If we know the codes then we can just type them in separated by a comma or more usually we would select them from a list and we can select a single code or it might be easier just to select all. There are no surface features which exist in the other survey which don't already exist in the current but there are some text styles. We can only select one type in each merge, so if we're going to merge in links we can't merge in style at the same time, but what will happen when we've done so, it will keep coming round to this menu allowing us to now select the different entries. If I restore this survey back to where it was, input, merge, legend, this time replace, all features are available to be merged. Now the reason why point features are not available is that there are no point feature codes in the other survey. Otherwise we can select link features and what may happen here is that if the same feature code exists in the current survey than in the other survey and it's drawn differently then you will see a change in the LSS survey as we merge them in. Input, merge, stations. This is an option which will be of particular use to land surveyors who may already have survey station control in a pre-existing survey which they want to merge into the current one either before or after loading new data into a new survey. If we were to browse for the example survey finished and again the same rule applies, we can either add new stations only or replace existing ones and add new ones. What we're seeing here is that because these two sets of data are at completely different coordinates one set of data is up here which is the original ground survey and then the station we've just merged in are at a local grid and that's why they're down here. We now come on to Import Merge Survey. What I would like to do in illustration of this particular option is to go through a short worked exercise so that you can get a feel for exactly why you might want to use this particular command. In doing that I'm just going to use one of the Output Design Digitize commands and I'm going to design a small lake. 
I won't go through the details of this design exercise because that will be covered in the Output Design Digitize Sidewall tutorial. If I design this down to 100 meters, which is about 8 meters below the ground level, I'll put some feature codes in, top of bank, bottom of bank, there you go, that'll do. Design a closed loop and design to the right. And there you have the lake. Just to show you what that looks like, if I now over display the original ground survey, we'll see what we've created. Okay. Now let's say I want to merge into this lake design the existing terrain where it lies outside of the extents of the lake itself. I could use after having saved it, input merge survey from the original ground model which is this model here and I want to add only where it lies outside of the extents of the current survey. Whenever we do a merge of survey data then we always get a report explaining what it's done and you will see in the background that it has only merged data points around the outside of the lake. And if we now draw a section, you'll see the current survey now is original ground outside of the design and the lake inside. If I go and restore that back again, this time if I merge add but don't spot that outside current survey and then add it in the contours look a bit strange and if we do a query section now we will see that we've got the ground model up to the edge of the lake design and then we've got a, a partial slope which goes down to the lake and then goes back up to where the ground level was and then back down to the edge of the lake. What we've done there is we've added points in to the lake design itself that should not have been included because they're, they've replaced the lake design. So the chances are you will make this mistake at some stage. So it's just spotting the signs of that before you uh, you go any further and uh, start saving things and printing reports out etc. So let's go back to restore. Okay so that's the late design. The other way of doing it is if we go back to our ground model and for example we might just want to over display the lake design it's just in a single color. You can see the extent of that lake. We can see that the two overlap. You don't need to put the over display on, it's just to show you where that is. If we now go into input, merge, survey, whenever you flip between two different surveys, LSS should choose the previously open survey as the one that you might want to do the merge from, but it may not do that, so always make sure that you are selecting the correct survey here. So we're going to merge from the lake survey and we're going to replace as well as add. Now this is like a pastry cutter option. Remember we showed the lake over displayed? It will use that as the shape of the pastry cutter and it will replace as well as add the entire survey into the current one and this time it's highlighted the points in white that are going to be deleted during that merge. And now we have the composite model which is the original ground and the lake added. You will have noticed there are quite a lot of options on that command and I won't go through them all but uh, if you go to the help button in the command then it will explain everything that you need to know about that. 
let's restore the current survey and we now go to input merge survey at new location before we do this I'm just going to open up a survey which we may wish to use in this command in the test data folder you will find a folder called objects and there are some wind turbines uh, a house some golf green designs some photovoltaic cells I'm going to pick the T-shaped bungalow and you will see here that I have turned on the point numbers for this and these become quite significant in this input merge survey at new location because I'm going to default to using point number one as the insertion point the alignment defined between point one and two and then if I want to scale it I can also use the width of the building to point number three so the point numbers become quite important in this particular command if we just look at this in 3D you'll see the shape that we are um, looking to to merge in so if we look around the back point number one was here point number two was here and point number three was here go back to ground I choose input merge survey new location browse for the house I want normally you would choose replace as well as add what this will do is where there are points in the existing terrain model that will lie underneath the object that you're merging they will get deleted in preference to add only because they may upset the shape that you're merging in if you just choose add only so we'll assume that we're going to use replace as well as add one option is one point no rotation or resize so that is just inserting the building in its same orientation as it exists in the original survey the second option is two points rotate but no resize remember now we're going to use point number one which is in this bottom left hand corner as the pivot point point number two which is this point up here to define the orientation but we're not resizing it multiple is quite useful especially if you're doing things like photovoltaics and you have a, a line of features then it will just add as many as it needs to insert in order to fill the gap between the uh, two digitized points we've got two points rotate and resize in this instance the length of the building is important for example if I were to go in and query the length of the building that's seven and a half meters if we choose this option now if you look at the active cursor you'll see that now the horizontal distance is 13.97 meters but if we want to put a building in at 12 meters that will now increase the size that back edge will be 12 meters and then everything else will get bigger accordingly and if we choose three points rotate and stretch in both directions not only can we define the length of that back edge but we can also de define the width of the building or the thickness of the building so that's increased it in both dimensions when using all of these position by options we can decide what we want to do with the levels for that object and normally speaking the object survey will be set at zero datum because what we don't want to do is work out the the height of that feature before we start merging it in so if we assume it's at zero we can then add it to the existing terrain surface without worrying about what the altitude will be when we do insert it for example if I just choose this option and insert it here 
what it's done there is because the, the house is at zero meters and the rest of the terrain here is at over a hundred meters it's placed at zero we've now got a very steep slope going down to that that object so that's why you would pick the add for example the mean level of the located points and insert it at the ground which is the average level of insertion okay I'm going to show you another example now and if we go and open let's not save what we've done there let's go back to the objects folder we've got a couple of golf green designs here now this survey contains quite a few hundred points and whereas the building that we had only had probably 20-30 points in it, it was easy to say well the back edge is always going to be the alignment well in this case there is no obvious back edge to it uh, but how are we going to know what the point number is to insert for example that one that I might want to use to insert is point number 824 that one there is 247 and that one over there is point number 3 so that means it's going to be much easier if I can edit those points and give them point numbers that I'm going to remember later on. So if I go to edit amend obs, pick the first point and just amend the observation number. So if I say I'm going to make this 20,000 because I know there won't be a point number called 20,000 in there anyway because there aren't enough points in there. So that's going to be 20,000 that one's going to be 20,001 and that one's going to be 20,002 save the survey go back to my previous survey which is the ground one and choose input merge survey new location pick the green design one replace as well as add this time I want to start the insertion from point number 20,000 and I'm going to use the three point option so I'm going to say start the green there that far side is going to be there and the other side is going to be there and you'll see that it has now merged in that green at the average level of insertion at the correct scale and the correct orientation. I'll just show you that again. If I change the orientation entirely this time, there you go. It's larger and uh, stretched and is also at a different orientation. General text will allow us to merge items of general annotation from one survey into another. It may be you have a library of phrases or words that you generally use in a survey and you want to just merge them into the current one then you can do that using this command. For input merge landform I'd again like to go through a worked example but I'm going to use the lake example that I showed you in the input merge survey command. So what I'm going to do here is open up that lake. Okay, remember we had this lake design. Which creates this shape. Now what merge landform does is allows us to merge the shape of one model and add it to another. I'm going to show you an example here where we're going to restore this excavation and we're going to build up the land back to its original level but we're going to allow a bulking factor therefore when it settles it will settle down to the final desired level. There are two stages to this first of all we need to create a, a level difference model or an isopachite model which will show us the depth of excavation so that's the next thing we select output level difference at observations I'm going to call this lake depth the other survey is ground 
lots of options here I'm not going to worry about. These will be covered in a bit more detail in the relevant tutorial on output level difference. Okay. If I move the cursor around the screen, in the bottom right hand corner you'll see the eastings, the northings and the level. Well that Z value isn't an absolute altitude anymore, it's a depth, it's a depth of construction. This lake is at its deepest about 8.7, 8.8 meters. If we simply add 8.8 meters onto those values then we'd get the post settlement model levels. But what we want to do is, for example, add a 20% surplus onto those values. So that's what I'm going to do now. If I save this survey, back to the lake model now, input, merge, browse for the lake depth model, that's the isopachite model, landform, add only, and we're going to add the terrain levels but in order to add that 20% surplus we're going to multiply them by 0.2 so minus 1.2 because the level differences are negative this is now added on the depth to the lake model and if we now save that as the pre-settlement model Query section, including the ground survey and the original lake design. Will show us very clearly the 20% surplus. If we zoom in at this end, there's zero. and this height is 20% of this height here. If we now go back to the original we can input merge, survey, select the pre-settlement model, replace as well as add, and there we have the combined DTM with the pre-settlement restoration surface and the surrounding terrain model. Input, merge, positions and settings allows us to copy a variety of different settings from one survey into another. Let me just show you one simple example. If I go into DTM display and turn on the color height bands for this survey and set the color range to equal the range of levels that we have within this specific survey then this blue color represents 100 meters going through green right up to the top which is at about 108 meters or thereabouts. If I want to plot this survey and compare it with a height banded plot of another survey what I want to make sure is that the height band colors in both of those plots represent the same level values in both. If I save this survey and then open up the original ground model if I now go into DTM display and go to settings we'll see that the height bands represent a completely different level range in this survey. We don't see any blue at all in here, it's mostly green. But if we choose input, merge, positions from the lake model and select the height band settings then go back into DTM display we'll now see that those height ranges have changed to correspond to the same ones in the lake survey. 
That means that these blue areas are at the same altitude as the same blue coloured areas in the lake survey. There are several other options that you can select here, such as the configuration of the display, any over display survey settings, and if you've done some ZVI ZTV work, then also the settings for those particular commands.